Welcome to part three of a three-part interview entitled Fundraising and People of Color, designed to address how to build confidence and where our identity comes from. I hope you enjoy this video. Well, Erica, welcome to our channel. You are what I would call a person of faith. Uh, address identity and self-worth. I, I mentioned earlier that I felt like you are a person who has, as long as I've known you, you've always had a lot of confidence. Um, where does your identity, and, and as, as any person of color, um, you know, where does your identity come from? Where's your self-worth, your, your confidence? Uh, how do you, where does that come from? How do you muster that, that confidence, that identity? Yeah, so definitely am a person of faith. I'm a Christian. I'm very proud to say that. Um, and I bring that with me everywhere that I go. Um, I cannot tell you the opportunities um, that I've had to just pray with people, encourage people. Um, a, a small example of that, and uh, it'll connect me to your question, is you know, a, a lot of times, of course, I can be intimidated no matter what room I go into. But I remember working with a commissioner for the Department of Education in a particular state. And um, during that time, she had just had a student in a particular city. Um, it was all over the news that she had committed suicide, this 12-year-old young girl. And uh, as God would have it, we had a, a meeting scheduled like two days after that, like that had been scheduled months prior. And so um, I knew the city, I worked with the county, I've worked with the state. And so uh, I knew I was going to go into that meeting and say, okay, Lord, uh, you know, she's not a, really a person of faith, but every, anyone needs encouragement during those really difficult times just as a leader. And so I know that she's responsible for every student in the state that's going to school. So in my meeting with her, I asked her, of course, how she was doing. And, and she's like, well, you know, it's been a really hard week. I lost, I lost uh, one of my kids. And I was like, I know, I, I, I definitely have heard about that, you know. Um, and then she just began to open, like, to just cry. She was crying with me kind of in that room. And it's a private room in the building. Nobody was seeing, you know, or hearing our conversation. And so I was able to, like, grab, and I said, you know, would it be okay for me to pray with you. And um, I gave her a hug. It was pre-COVID folks, so don't freak out. But <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, I gave her a hug and I just prayed with her. And um, she still is, you know, years after, still kind of will reach out to me and we're still connected in some ways because uh, that's kind of the, the, the secret uh, to my success, I would say, is that, um, rather than being so focused when you're meeting with folks on what you're trying to get out of them and your agenda with them, if you create a unforgettable experience for someone, that they will never forget. And mm -hmm. so um, let that be it. Always leave something better than you found it. And so, and that is absolutely rooted in my relationship with God and just my belief that, you know, I walk in purpose and I have to be confident because with that um, access and as God opens doors in my life and career or personally, or whether as a mother, as a wife, whatever it is, you know, I have a responsibility and I am absolutely aware of that. And what I do with that is, is really what matters. And so I, I want to make a difference and I carry that with me everywhere that I go. And so being rooted in that is my center when I feel like I'm not enough, when I feel like I'm not qualified enough, I'm not smart enough, everybody in the room is better than me, looks, looks better than me, is shaped differently than me, their hair is different than me, whatever it is, um, they sound smarter than I, than I sound. Um, I can always go back to say, okay, okay, so what if they are all those things? But why are you in the room, Erica? Like, why are you in the room and what are you going to do at this moment? And that is what I have to answer to. And so just having, being rooted in that centers me and keeps me kind of solid, like a palm tree. So when the storms come or negativity or whatever comparison, um, I'm reminded like, 
girl, stay still. Like God's got you. So <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's really important. Oh, that's excellent. Well, Erica, one of the things that I've always felt about you is that you're a networker extraordinaire. You, you have the people you've met and the relationships you've developed are, are just truly extraordinary over the years. And um, one thing that I know your heart beats for is mentoring and, and finding somebody that can mentor you and that you can mentor as, uh, as, as an up and coming leader as well. Talk about mentorship and, and uh, how that's important to you. So mentorship changed my life. And I always try to like get through this topic and not get emotional. So I'm not going to get emotional, but <laughs> uh, mentoring changed my life. So Jim, of course, uh, you've been a number one mentor in my life for the past 20 years. Uh, you were the guy that um, invested a lot into me. I was fortunate. I was working at, you know, a global headquarters, you know, uh, for crew. Um, but that kind of exposure does something to an individual where you can't think small from that point forward in your life. When you have been in a place where you have seen what God can do, I mean, it just, it, it, it sets you up like for life and you're always expecting great things, you know, <laughs> which is also a problem because then when great things don't happen, it can be very discouraging and disappointing. But I will say that uh, mentorship helped me. I mean, it guided me on, on in every single stage of my life. And so I landed in this world very, very early. I never in a million years even knew this was like a career for people like who asked for money for a living. Sure. Uh, like that's crazy. Like who, who would sign up for that work? You know, nobody as a little kid says, I can't wait to grow right. up to raise money. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, who does that? And so, but I, I was fortunate to land in a team of people that even though they didn't really know who I was or, you know, they invested in trainings. They allowed me to partake in trainings that they were leading, that they were hosting, facilitating um, on really learning the in and out of, of all of that. And this is where I'll say culture played a huge role as well. As a Latina, you know, we are so much about family and relationships and hugs and love and passion. And, and I'm all those things. And that is absolutely a part of my identity as well. And so um, building relationships was, was easy because as growing up in the church and, you know, like, and doing things in the community all the time, you're, you kind of, that's a practice of yours constantly is to always um, be in touch and get through conflict with family, getting through, you know, challenging times um, with friends or, you know, whatever it is. And so just being super resilient. And that's something that I think is a benefit for my, for people of color is that we are resilient. We are strong. You know, we bounce back. Uh, quick. We know what it is to break barriers and overcome difficult obstacles. And so um, that's, that's something that passion, that energy uh, is something that we bring into our work and everything that we do. And so, and even, I, I don't want to miss opportunity to mention how organizations, you know, when you're communicating uh, with people of color, understanding those values that our communities hold um, is helpful because it, it helps in the learning experience when you contextualize things to the values that we hold that are true within our own uh, cultures and communities. And so one like family. So working with a client recently, even I brought in like a, a head, you know, um, news person of a <clears throat> Hispanic uh, network or channel from like decades ago. They were one of the first uh, Hispanics working in that network. And so when they brought them in, to talk to this organization that was trying to learn what kind of language do I use to engage better with with Latinos, you know, it was kind of like, look, you have to make sure that you're using family, you have to make sure that you're using language that is is uniting and it's talking about things that the culture values. You know, um, so if it's somebody's birthday, they were like, give them, they, in trying to provide some, you know, practical examples, like on people's birthdays, like make sure that um, you give them the day off or, uh, cause that's something that would mean a lot to them, that would show them that you value them, you know, because time with friends or time with family means a lot to us. And so it's, it was, it's small little examples like that, but as organizations doing your due diligence in majority culture to be intentional to say, okay, let me make sure and pay attention to what are the values that those communities hold and how can we bring in some of those things 
um, in a way that will foster a, uh, an atmosphere of belonging for those individuals. And so my mentor and mentors since have been so great in fostering that kind of atmosphere of like, if I made a mistake, they weren't like, how dare you? Like, you messed everything up for us, Erica. They were like, that happens. It happens to me too. And I was like, wow, really? It happens to you too? Like, it's, it's like being honest and vulnerable with your staff of color is, is super, is super, super helpful instead of trying to be strong heroes and having it together all the time, like practicing vulnerability because it allows us to feel safer in those environments and less afraid of taking risk and with with the end being that we're gonna make a mistake or we're gonna destroy a relationship and oh, that's $500,000 that we lost, you know, like we are already carrying so much pressure. And so it helps when we have mentors around us. I wanna encourage other people and other organizations, if you don't have a formalized, you know, mentorship program, apprenticeship program, please consider doing that in your organizations um, because it's, it's so helpful. It really is to help people kind of break through those barriers of the cultures of your organization. Every organization has their own culture, you know, and has their own DNA, has their own way of doing things. And for anyone coming into that environment that's trying to pretty much impress you and show you that they're qualified enough or smart enough and not make you regret your decision, you know, there's, they, they, it would help so much to just make them feel like they belong there, you know, like, and not because of anything that they do or they don't do or whatever, but just because you've chosen them, like, just keep reinforcing that, you know, for those individuals, like why you chose them, because mm -hmm. that really is helpful when we're questioning ourselves. And, and even as you were talking about the networks, you know, always approach people with, you know, how can I, like serve you? Like what problem do you have? Or just listen carefully um, in those conversations to what they're not saying, right? And mm -hmm. it's like, how can I serve you? So when you talk about the network that I've built, I just want to make sure I answer that question. But no, you know, when you talk about good. the network that um that I've built throughout my years, it really has been that it's been, okay, God, you this person is in my life. Uh you brought them to me. Like how can I how can I serve them? Uh or and those casually in conversation just say, oh my goodness, I've been so frustrated with this conflict at work or, you know, whatever. And I'm like, well, what's going on? You know, like, uh, tell me, or, hey, I can connect you with somebody that's really great in that area. Yeah. Um, and so just kind of adopting people's like problems and taking ownership of it and just being a problem solver. And then people will always come back to you um, for stuff like that. And so as long as you are always making them kind of the priority and saying, how can I serve you? How can I add value to you? Um, of course, in balance and in moderation. Mm -hmm. But um, there are key people that God put, puts into your life and that you're just kind of like, all right, I need to make sure that, you know, I am um, helping this person out. Um, and again, to make them better than I found them. It doesn't matter if it's a donor, if it's a partner, if it's an investor, if it's a coworker, if it's your boss even, you know, um, how important it is to take the posture of being a servant you know, like serve people well. You serve people well, that creates an experience in their lives, a moment that they will never ever forget. And so, and I, um, yeah, and so just mentorship is is very, very important. And, and Jim, I, I really am grateful. I would not be where I am had it not been for you and that team that God, you know, landed. And I believe that that's what you did. You saw me and you said, look, I can help this girl. Let me invest in her. Let me help her out. Let me guide her. And I still keep coming back to you for that. So, you know, I live by this, you know, where I'm just like, hey, Jim, I have another problem you can help me solve. <laughs> One of the things that, uh, you know, I know for you, Erica, and by the way, we're speaking with Erica Jurena. She is a long time, 22 plus year veteran in development and fundraising and building relationships. One of the things that I know is so important to you is just pouring yourself into the life of others, training, coaching, mentoring. Um, you started an organization called Gracias. And tell us a little bit about Gracias and what the, what, what the organization is and what its vision is for the future. Absolutely. So Gracias is an acronym for giving resources, appreciation, care, inspiration, adding value and service. And that's 
what we do. That's Gracias. Um, and more about that organization, you can visit us at graciasus.org. But essentially, I just started to look at the pattern throughout my career from the very beginning until now, 22 years. It didn't matter if I was in a room with government leaders or, you know, higher ed or um, uh, health initiatives or homelessness, whatever it was uh, in, in, in these rooms, I was always, what I say, a triple minority. I was probably the only female, was the youngest in the room, and then I was the only non-white in the room. And so I just got tired of seeing that, and this has been like my life's work. And so I'm very, very passionate to like fill the room, fill the room with, with great talent, with different perspectives, different walks of life um, that can add tremendous, tremendous value to companies, corporations, businesses, government. We need it everywhere. We need to see diversity everywhere reflected in our work. And so Gracias exists as a training platform to engage minorities in philanthropy, specifically wanting to train and equip people in raising funds, raising money for organizations for every segment, direct mail, mid-level, mid-major, major donor, mega donors, um, and also really focuses on kind of helping people to build identity, to define, like to really learn who they are so that they can confidently walk into the, the corporate offices, their jobs, their businesses, as a parent, you know, as a wife, as a whatever it is that you do, but to do it with confidence and with great purpose and intentionality. Um, that's what we want to see. We want to see the best out of people. And so Gracias helps to kind of engage people effectively in that area. So as volunteers, as donors, as uh, board members, and those who even want to start a nonprofit or an and or are currently leading one. And so we help on all those areas. So I mentioned the fundraising, but we definitely do, you know, train in strategic um, partnerships. We train in diversity, inclusion, and belonging. It's just like a nature of like obvious, <laughs> of the obvious of who we are, of course. Um, and then in community engagement, because it's important to build your community, but to do it in an effective way and in a way that actually involves that community as an inclusive um, as possible. And so I'm championing that. I will die doing that. But I want to see as many people, you know, doing this super important work as the Browning of America continues. Um, I always tell people, what do you think the state of our nonprofits will be if we are not engaging, training, and equipping people properly in communities everywhere on how to give back, volunteer, um, all of those things that we rely on so much in the nonprofit sector. And so I encourage you to do the same. Make sure that you start mentorship programs, apprenticeship programs. Jim changed my life. As a result of him doing that, I've been changing and making a difference in people's lives. But it was all, it all started with him. And so I also want to invite majority culture in to engage. Like, do not be intimidated. Do not be afraid. I want, we welcome that. We need that. We need ambassadors inside of organizations, in C suite to be advocating for our communities and our people and to see us um, for who we are, how brilliant we are and what we come, what the value that we add and uh, the difference that we can make if you only invite us in, let us in. And so um, we are knocking and, and open your eyes to see those that maybe have perhaps been overlooked within your organization, but have tremendous talent uh, or just require a little bit of training. And I'm telling you, we'll go such a long way. No matter where I land in this world of, of work, I always bring my very first organization with me when I walk into the room because I think about the profound impact they made in my life. And as a result of that, that is something that as a culturally that we do, it's like, you've been good to us. We're going to make sure to have your back until the day we die. And so it's worth investing into. Mm, boy. Well, I'm, I know there'll be some that will want to give you words of encouragement. How, how do our viewers uh, reach you, Erica? Yes, please visit me, ericajarena.com. That's my website. Fill out the form. Um, that'll go straight to our team, and I will look forward to hearing from you. I welcome comments, questions, and, of course, the opportunity to serve you. So mm. thank you so much, Jim. Oh, absolutely. And as always, if there's any comments for me or for Erica, please put those in the comments section below. Uh, be sure to uh, hit the subscribe button if you aren't already subscribing and click the bell so 
that you can be reminded when these videos are are released and we certainly exist to help you and as i always say uh, what we want to do is reach the goal of being fully funded thank you Thank you.